Uh, most of the side effects that uh, women have are in the first couple of months of starting uh, hormone replacement or when you change doses. And um, it's usually vaginal bleeding or spotting, maybe breast tenderness, hirsutism, meaning some hair, uh, acne, maybe bloating, uh, meaning maybe they need a little of extra um, progesterone, meaning the estrogen and the progesterone for them isn't working, so you have to, um, I actually uh, just manipulate, change the dosage of, of them. And um, joint pain, which actually I don't see a whole lot. I actually see a lot of joint pain being improved. Um, and of course, all of them are dose dependent. And you know what may be the right dose for you may not be the right dose for you. You know, everyone needs a different dose or um, of estrogen progesterone metabolizes a bit different. Um, I'm sure that this is not new, the Women's Health Initiative, the results initially, and now they've been hashed and rehashed, and actually something new just came out, I think maybe a month ago. Um, it was, the, the really good thing about the WHI study was that it was a lot of lives. There were 10,000 patients. Uh, so that's a lot of people in a study. Uh, so it was hormone replacement, hormone replacement versus placebo and the hormone replacement of course was uh, women who had uteruses were placed on PremPro if they were the hormone replacement if they had uh, hysterectomy and no uterus were given Premarin and um, they stopped the study in, particularly in the PremPro study uh, they stopped it even earlier because of the increase in cardiovascular disease, in invasive breast cancer, strokes and blood clots. Now remember, strokes or blood clots, nothing new. They were taking oral estrogen. Um, now they were, this is the increase, 37 out of 30, er, versus 30, 38 versus 30, 29 versus 21. Uh, there were some definite problems with the study. It was, um, horse mare urine, and synthetic progestin. Not what I prescribe. Most subjects are, actually the, the patients they uh, enrolled in the study were greater than 65 years of age. Uh, most women um, actually start hormone replacement before that. Also, this was oral. Um, and so there were also, um, many of them had been smokers or actually currently were smokers as well. So. Um, I think that there's some problems in, in um, uh, how the study um, was interpreted and organized. And then uh, re most recently, again, um, there was a, uh, it's been studied on many different aspects and many different aspects. Um, uh, there was also a decrease in colorectal cancer. There was a decrease in um, fractures as well which was good, but as of recent, they, they reanalyzed the data and said, oh, those breast cancers that we thought were superficial were actually more invasive, and they were actually, um, um, if they're invasive, they're more advanced. Uh, again, um, we're comparing PremPro, which is horse mare urine and progestin, and I give transdermal or transvaginal estrogen and progesterone. I really just, and there are many other studies to, to think about and to look at in that regard, but I don't th I think they're apples and oranges. I don't think that you can take all of that and lump it into one big uh, pot and, and say the results are the same. Uh, so, you know, what about cancer? Does uh, hormone replacement cause cancer? I truly think that there are a lot of other problems. I think it's how we metabolize estrogen. I think we live in a very toxic world where there's lots of xenoestrogens and I think that's a problem with the environment. Um, there are, have been no studies that have associated actually bioidentical hormone therapy with increased risk of cancer. Now am I going to say there's no way? No, of course not. Uh, but I think there's a, a, a risk that's much less. Um, 
I think it's good if you're using only physiologic uh, levels, if you're using transdermal or transvaginal, if you're having your uh, levels monitored, um, and you're also, you know, I, some, some people come to me and say, balance my hormones, but you know, they're not, what about how much do they weigh? Are they exercising? What are they eating? How are they managing their stress? All of that has to do with whether you're going to develop cancer or not. Not just are you taking some transdermal estrogen. That's way too easy.